Hi folks, I'm back for another movie review tonight. A couple nights ago, Leatherhead did his uh, little webcast thing that was completely disgusting. He talked about his new line of uh, cured meats, which really grossed me out. You have to bear with, uh, with us. He's a little kooky. Uh, before we start this uh, webcast review, I'm going to dedicate this to uh, Kara K. Uh, great new friend, and uh, Kara, I hope you like this. Uh, you might like this movie, Kara. Uh, she doesn't like scary movies, but, you know, I'm going to review it anyway. Anyway, this movie came out in 1995. Uh, before we start, I'm a huge Clint Howard fan. I, I love this guy's movies. I've seen a lot of his movies, House of the Dead, How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. You know, and a whole ticks, remember ticks? <laughs> oh my god, that was a disgusting movie. He played this crazed uh, marijuana farmer who just got infested with ticks under his skin and everything. Well, anyway, for, we'll get to that movie real maybe in the near future. That's actually a pretty weird movie. Anyway, this play, uh, this, <laughs> let me do this right. This movie came out in 1995. It basically starts out with uh, him as an eight year old kid. We're talking about the 1960s. You know, flashes back to his childhood. And of course, the ice cream man pulls up to uh, in front of his house, and, you know, with, his, you know, with the music playing and everything. Y'all, I'm sure y'all have got ice cream in the past when you were kids, from, uh, even now, from the ice cream man uh, going down the street, you know, selling his uh, ice cream uh, cones and crap like that. <laughs> I, I used to get those cones and push-ups and dream sickles all the time when I was a kid, man. That was great. I don't, you don't see those so, uh, so much uh, nowadays. It's kind of sad. Or maybe they only go to the rich neighborhoods, you know, and they'd stay away from the poor neighborhoods because they can't make enough money, you know. I love ice cream trucks, though. Anyway, it starts out with he's basically waiting for the ice cream man. Of course, the ice cream man pulls up. 1965, whatever it might be, or 60, whatever. 65, we'll call it 65. And of course, a mob, uh, a, a mob hit kills the ice cream man instantly when he comes out of his truck with his, uh, all of his, uh, you know, you know, the feed the kids all their, you know, after paying the money for the ice cream stuff like that. So, and of course, he's dead lying in the gutter, you know, and and little Clint, of course, comes up to him takes the ice cream out of his hand and you know the blood's going down the you know down the street and everything and he doesn't even care about the ice cream man he only cares about his his ice cream so his, my, all the neighbors come flying over the police are on their way you know and so uh, his mom goes he tells his mom mommy when am I going to get my ice cream the ice cream man is dead <laughs> it's just so goddamn weird. And then, of course, we go, we fast forward to when he's a, a teenager or something, and he's ba basically, he got so traumatized, trauma, holy cuff, whatever, he got so fucked up from that, that he's in a sanitarium or an asylum, you know, and he's being pumped full of drugs in his brain, you know, syringes in his brain, they're squirting this green goo into his uh, brain, you know, I don't know what it is, maybe it's kind of like a lobotomy of some sort, or whatever it is. So he's, he's completely screwed up, uh, Clint Howard, as uh, a kid and a young man growing up. And, of course, uh, you know, he, he idolized the ice cream man, you know, the guy, you know, because that was his friend and everything, you know, even though he didn't show much emotion on it, you know. And so he basically takes, he, he starts his own business, or he, he takes over the business, you know, whatever, when he's like 20s or 30s, whatever. And so it is one of the weirdest movies I ever saw in my life. It is Clint Howard is, you know, he's one of my favorite actors. I told you just a couple minutes ago. I love Clint Howard. He is, he can play, he can portray some of the creepiest characters on screen you will ever see in your life. He's actually done some really good movies too. Some uh, basic, uh, you know, box office, uh, you know, blockbusters stuff like that. No, he's actually a good actor. He can do anything. He can do a comedy. He can do horror. He can do mental crap. He can do straight roles. He's actually a good uh, actor, and if you go to his uh, internet database file, you will be amazed at the number of uh, movies this guy has been in, and, you know, voiceovers, movies, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I, it's got to be in the hundreds. I mean, he goes all the way back to, like, the 60s, you know. He's, uh, of course, Ron Howard's younger brother. We all know who Ron Howard is, and, uh, but I like, I really like Clint Howard. He is, He's very unusual. He has one of the weirdest looking faces. You know, he's kind of bald on top, you know, and he's his head kind of looks like 
like an egg or something, you know, and he's he's got this really sadistic smile and grin when he wants to be evil and stuff, you know, and or he just wants to look he looks at you, you know, sideways and he just he's giving you this look like he just wants to kill you. He has a lot of these looks in this movie, which is absolutely hilarious, you know. You just you don't want to cross the ice cream man, you know. If he likes you, he likes you. If he hates you, he'll just uh churn you up into his ice cream, you know. <laughs> it's just great. Of course, he kills his landlady's dog. <laughs> oh my God! He just—he just, you know, it's one of those uh, meat grinders. He just runs it through. You know, it's just—it's just flattening out as her dog because I don't know. His dog is uh, her dog is basically uh, is giving him a lot of problems. You know, because the dog knows something's going on inside the ice cream truck. That's where he keeps all of his prisoners. And everything, you know, anybody that crosses him in the neighborhood, you know that that you know, attempts to stop him and stuff like that. I don't know how many people he's really killed in this movie, but, you know, there's a lot of cameos in this movie. Listen to that. Ooh, brain. <laughs> hey, you think I'm looking good today? You know, I'm actually doing this webcast fairly well. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm not uh, screwing up my words too bad. Excuse, excuse all the typos. I'm just a little drunk, but yeah, I can do this. You know, there's a lot of famous movie people in this. Steve Garvey's in this movie, remember from baseball? There's David Warner, you know. You all know these faces. Sandal Berg Bergman uh, from, like, the second Conan movie, the first Conan movie with Arnie. Ah, uh, God, there's a lot of people in this movie, man. Jan Michael Vincent, he, you know, portrays a detective. Yeah, let's see, who else is in this movie? It is amazing. The cast they got for this is David Naughton from American Werewolf in London. I have to look at my cue cards here. Olivia Hussey's in this movie. Oh my god. Who else is in this movie? It's amazing. Just a lot of people in this movie, man. It has a really good cast, but the only thing I don't like about the, the regular cast is kind of bland. You know, they go about their daily lives and they kind of like they're oblivious to what's going on. You know, they're just worried about their marital affairs and their bills and stuff like that. Yeah, so they really don't count in this movie. It's mainly, the movie's really focused on Clint Howard and his ice cream truck, you know, and and I, it, it doesn't really show him killing a lot of people. It's kind of like a, a creepy, atmospheric uh, type of a horror movie, you know. You know this guy is completely deranged, you know, but, you know, he basically is, he tries to be sweet, you know, he comes across really nice to everybody, but, you know, he's got a really dark side. You know, <laughs> uh, I should tell you a couple of scenes. Uh, he actually, what happens is they get, the police, the local police get a tip. The detectives get a tip that something's going on at the ice cream factory with Clint Howard. So they basically uh, get a search warrant and they basically go in and destroy the place. And he's just, you know, completely screwed up about that, you know. You know, they're smashing through walls and everything with axes, a bunch of cops and everything, detectives, you know, looking for any kind of evidence against them because a little boy's been uh, uh, missing in the neighborhood. He's actually being held captive. He's not dead. He's been just held captive, you know, so he's, he's still alive. Uh, it doesn't show, he doesn't kill any little kids, so don't worry about that, you know. He mainly kills adults, so that's, that's what he kills. So if you're all worried about that, that's not going to happen. They did keep this movie a little tame in that area, so that's I agree with that. And so, <laughs> so uh, Jan Michael Vincent and his partner are at the search warrant at the ice cream factory. Of course, it's just a small little building, and uh, he's Clint Howard said something really smart to Jan Michael Vincent. You know, he said something about. Uh, they find this big old grinder because that's what stirs the ice cream. You have you ever been in an ice cream factory? It's a giant uh, industrial uh, spitter that you know blends the ice cream together and everything, different flavors or whatever you know, throws it basically. So uh, Jan Michael Vincent gives him a like a card to call the city so he can get some damage record, you know, some damage help because what the detectives and the other police officers did to his his business, you know, he's pissed off and he, he tells Jan Michael Vincent when he's walking out that uh, Jan, Jan Michael Vincent basically says, what's this for? You know, and, and Clint Howard goes, well, that's what I, and when I kill police officers, I put them in there and cut them up and grind them and stuff. You know, it's just creepy as hell. And Jan Michael Vincent just looks back, back at him going, oh my God, okay, whatever. You know, but they have no proof against him, you know, so he's you know, he's scot-free for right now, and 
But as the movie goes along, everybody in the neighborhood's getting wind that, you know, something's going on with this guy. This guy is completely deranged. Deranged. Get my word straight. Clint Howard. And <laughs> so they're trying to find evidence against them and stuff like that. And there's one scene at towards the very end of the movie where they go to the asylum, the sanitarium where, of course, Clint Howard was uh, institutionalized back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, whatever. And uh, they think they're talking to a normal doctor, but he's actually one of the patients, and he is he's actually in control of the asylum. And this scene is so creepy. And so Jan, Michael Vincent, and uh, his partner follow him upstairs. It's like a three, two, three, four floor sanitarium institution, whatever it was. And all the inmates are completely out of their rooms. They're basically, the whole place is destroyed. There's, there's graffiti all over the wall. I mean, they're like not really killing each other, but they're just wandering around, bumping into walls, you know, babbling, you know, babbling about nothing, you know, they're completely, they're loose. And then we see a flashback to the doctor who actually is the owner of the asylum, the, the, you know, and he's basically on the table with a syringe in his head with this green goop being squirted into his brain. So the patients basically took control of the asylum. It's kind of like Arkham Asylum. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, like, you know it's, it's, it's very cool. And so Mike, Jan Michael Vincent, his partner, start following this guy around all the different floors and everybody's completely loose. Oh, it's just, it's kind of disgusting as hell. They're just doing things to each other. There's, they're, oh my God, you got to see this. All the lights are half smashed and you know, everything is hanging off the ceiling, you know, and they're trying to get out of there, but these patients are surrounding them and following them everywhere on every floor and everything, and they're getting paranoid as hell. When you see the scene, you will, it actually will get under your skin. It is creepy as fucking hell, man. It, it, but they do get out alive, you know, and they have to call uh, back up to go in there to get that place uh, back and, you know, restored. Because, like I said, uh, the patients have uh, taken over the asylum. You know, all the doctors are dead. Everybody's gone. The patients are just, you know, running amok. It's, when you see this scene, I actually played the scene back a couple times just to watch it again and watch it again it absolutely creeped me out the music is really good and it's kind of dimly lit as they're walking through the asylum and they're you know they're trying just to get out because it these these lunatics are basically blocking their way they're you know they're battling their face like you know you know what I, you know what I'm talking about I don't have to explain it to you and uh, but if you if you can imagine this watch this movie Watch this particular scene in this movie. You will be creeped out. But anyway, they eventually, you know, Jan Michael Vincent, they're shoving these guys out of their way. You know, women, men, children, you know, get out of my goddamn way. They're trying to find the exit out of this uh, sanitarium. And they finally do, man, you know, they finally do get out there. Get out, I should say. And Jan Michael Vincent is pointing his gun at these people. Get away from me. Get away from me. And they get in their car and they drive off, of course. They call for backup to close this place down and to get it restored again, you know, because it's, 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 oh God, you got to see this scene. Anyway, that's kind of towards the end of the movie. I'm not going to give you too much of this movie away. Anyway, there's a scene where, like I said, when they do the search warrant for his uh, ice cream factory, and then, of course, they decide to have Clint Howard tailed by a couple, you know, street cops, you know, in their car and stuff. Of course, he kills them. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he, he cuts their heads off, basically. <laughs> you know, they're inside the, the squad car. He gives them ice cream, I think, with drugs in it or something, knocks them out, and he just cuts their heads off, and he uses their heads as, a, as props. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. And, of course, these kids are trying to find their friends in the ice cream factory, you know, the one kid who's still alive, actually. And uh, Clint Howard is chasing him around the whole little area with, uh, with, uh, with the two heads on a pike. You know, they're like they're like a stick is up there. One, you know, just the heads. And he's he's sitting there talking like he's the cops. Like, oh my God, kids, what are you doing out? It's past curfew. You know? And the lips are actually moving on these two uh, decapitated heads. It is it's <laughs> so creepy. It is so creepy. Clint Howard just does a great job of portraying. Uh, Oh my God, this deranged ice cream man! Oh my God, I'm not going to tell you every scene. I never do because I don't want. Why you be kind of surprised? You know, uh, 
I, I'm going to give this movie a fairly decent rating. I'm not going to give it a great rating, but I'm going to give it a fairly decent rating. It has a lot of a lot of atmosphere, creepiness, you know, ambience. You know, it just it just really does a great job. It it's very unusual. I you know I I can't I can't explain it. You know, have you ever seen? It, you ever see uh, One Flew Over, Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Jack Nicholson? It's kind of like that, except more out on the street and everything, but a hundred times worse, you know, with the inmates completely... Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I, I I like his... You know, he has this... Look at his smile on this guy. He is so creepy, man. When he wants to portray a character that's absolutely... This is one of his better roles, I think. I mean, he's done a lot of great movies, but he abs absolutely... Uh, uh, <laughs> you don't want to cross this guy. I, yeah, I kind of like him, though, you know? he You kind of have a little bit of sympathy for this guy because of all the crap he went through as a kid inside the sen sanitarium and everything. But, you know, he, he completely let it take control of his life when he got out, you know? And, of course, uh, I think Olivia Hussey is his... She used to work as a nurse in the sanitarium, and she basically is his guardian. And so he lives right next to her, like in a trailer home, and, you know, she has her own trailer home. And he's always working in his fake garden with, uh, you know, with sunflowers and stuff like that. And one part, he's just sleeping, you know, on the ground next to his sunflowers, you know, just, you know, daydreaming about all kinds of crap, you know, killing people and just, you know, happier times maybe, you know, and... <laughs> I wish I could, you know, you, I would suggest that you go to YouTube and uh, check out a trailer for this movie. Oh, maybe just watch this movie on Netflix or something. Like I said, it's 20 years old. But, you know, I, stop it, rain. God damn, God damn rain. Ooh. Hope I'm making sense tonight. Ugh. I mean... Like I said, I'm not going to sit and tell you every little scene because that kind of spoils the movie for a lot of people. But I told you two scenes, what I thought were damn creepy. You know, and, uh, you know, I think the kids do a better job of acting than the, the adults in this movie. The adults are kind of bland and everything, and they're kind of like, eh, they're okay. But the kids are actually the focal point of this movie because they're trying to find their missing... Uh, little friend and stuff like that, and uh, they're, they're better actors than the older people in this movie, except for Clint Howard, of course. He he steals the show, really. He should do more of these movies. I really think he should do more of these movies, because I think... I, I know he's done a lot of kind of really goofy roles and kind of crazy roles, but he should concentrate on more of these type of movies. I think it would be uh, it would serve him well to do more of these kind of movies. I'm not sure he doesn't want to be typecast. He's already been typecast, you know. He's, most of these movies he's, he's done in his life are pretty much all B-movies, which are fine by me. I like B-movies. And he's done a lot of big uh, blockbusters and stuff with his brother, Ron Howard, and stuff like the, the Grinch movie and stuff like that. And uh, but you all know who Clint Howard is. You know, I mean, just look at that mug. Look at that mug. Oh, sorry. Let's see if I can get look at that. He's actually, <laughs> I like him a lot. Anyway, this movie's about 85 minutes long. Uh, I already told you basically who's in this movie. The adults are boring as hell. Clint Howard, of course, is the star of this movie. And the kids do a good job, too. And uh, this movie's, about, like I said, 85 minutes, 85 minutes long. Let me get my words straight. <laughs> I hope you all like my reviews. Uh, you know, I try to do a good job in some of these reviews. But I try not to spoil it too bad for people and stuff like that. I'm sure you, a lot of you people who have seen this movie you might agree with me. Some people might say, you're fucking whacked out just as bad as Clint Howard. Well, maybe a little bit. Eh, maybe a lot. Anyway, I always write my movies as rain is creepy. This she had more rain in this movie. It would have been really creepy. Even more creepy. Anyway, this movie, uh, I rate my movies 1 to 10 spider webs and Boy, this thunder's really bad tonight. It's kind of scaring me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Pex. Oh, whatever. Um, you know, it's, this, is, this is really kind of a hard movie to rate. You know, I'm going to... I normally... I'm going to give this movie a, a seven and a half spider webs. 
it's it's not going to be a perfect movie. I think they could have done a better job at this movie, but you know, for what the budget they had, I think they did a great job. You know, you know, I think it's uh, worth having in your collection. You know, I, if you notice, I have this on a double bill with, uh, oh my God, Jack Frost two. That movie blew chunks, man. Jack Frost two. It's it's a double horror bill here. I see if you can see that right there. Oh my God, I can't even watch that movie. Jack Frost two. I start. Well, I actually watched about a quarter of it, and it's just it sucks. I don't want to talk about that movie. It sucks. The movie, the price of the double, uh, the double feature was worth it, just for the ice cream man alone. You know, I I can f completely disregard and forget about uh, Jack Frost two. Uh, I was thinking about buying Jack Frost two just to see where it started, but I don't have to because the second one sucked. Even though a lot of people gave that a great review, I think the movie blew fucking chunks. It sucked. I watched about three quarters of it and I gave up and just you know I just went back to the Ice Cream Man. So anyway, we're gonna do seven and a half for the Ice Cream Man with Clint Howard and. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for movie reviews or ideas for uh, stuff like that, let me know. If you want to see a certain movie reviewed, I kind of prefer horror movies, stuff like that, please comment in the block box below. Blocks. How about box? That sounds better, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe I should... Uh, oh, I'm a little tired. I had a tough day at work today, so... Oh. Anyway, like I said, if you have any ideas for... Uh, movie reviews, please comment in the YouTube box below or the Facebook comment box below and let me know. And of course, I'm going to post our phone number. You can leave a message, answer machine, or my email address. And you can uh, email me with, uh, oh, Spidey, you fucking suck, man. I want to see your head blow up just like that movie Scanners back in the 80s. Just, you know, just, just I want to psychically, psychically explode your head. <laughs> that movie was so good, man. I mean, it wasn't a great movie. I'm Michael Ironside, of course, you know, but he's sitting there having a discussion on the stage with that one the bonehead dude, and he, he, you know, he blows his head up. This is a great scene. It's just nasty as hell. That movie, that, that particular scene is still nasty as fucking hell. And that was back in, I don't know, mid-80s maybe? I don't know. Uh, Scanners, you remember that. I like Michael Ironside, by the way. He's, he's a cool actor. <laughs> anyway, we're going to call this, uh, well, let's talk for a minute. We got, now nah, let's not talk. I'm already past 20 minutes. I'm sure you're all being bored to hell by this shit. <laughs> but anyway, seven and a half for Ice Cream Man. So, uh, I think I'm just going to cut this one short. And you guys uh, take care and uh, send me your comments, your reviews yourself, ideas for new movies I could review, stuff like that. So, until then... We'll see you at my webcast in the very near future. <laughs>